It was a day like any other for Panina from Kenya. She went to the market, leaving her mobile phone at home, not expecting any calls. But when she returned, everything changed. She scrolled through her phone and saw that she had a series of missed calls. Her husband, Paul, who worked on a lorry, was coming back from the Somali border when Al-Shabaab militants stopped the lorry, demanded everyone line up and forced everyone to recite the Shada, the Islamic creed. Paul refused. He couldn't deny his faith in Jesus. And he said these words to the attackers. If you want to kill me, I'll remain in Jesus. And if you let me go, I'll remain in Jesus. Paul was shot dead. Penina is 26 and she is now a single mum to four-year-old Steve. Even her in-laws didn't help her. They neglected her and now she's alone. But it's here that people like you, churches like Gold Hill, have come alongside Penina to be family to her, to remember her. Open Doors teams were able to help Penina. They provided her with training in, in dressmaking, computer skills. She also went through Standing Strong Through the Storm persecution survival training and trauma care to start rebuilding her life. Panina says this, the training helped heal my wounds. What stayed with me is that the hardships we pass through don't happen because God has left us, but because there's a reason. Talking to people and growing in my faith has restored my joy. Panina was all set to open a, a fashion shop in her community. Lockdown in Kenya prevented her dream becoming reality. Hopefully it will at some point. And so Open Door stepped in to provide Panina with emergency food aid and also a sewing machine so she could provide an income for her and Steve. Panina says this, I'd like to say thank you. You've played a great role in my life. I can't, cannot pay you with anything, but I pray that the Lord who's given you a heart to give will be gracious to you. Penina's story of suffering is one of 340 million across the world right now. 340 million, that's almost five times the population of the United Kingdom. Put another way, that's one in eight Christians globally who are persecuted for daring to follow Jesus, sharing in Jesus's suffering. Every year at Open Doors, we produce something called the Open Doors World Watch List, ranking the, the places where following Jesus really costs. There's not a list like it. And here's the map for 2021. Quite simply, persecution has reached unprecedented levels. You could say almost pandemic proportions. Here are some more sobering stats for you. Every day, 13 Christians are killed for their faith. Every day, 12 churches or buildings are attacked. And North Korea tops the list. For the 20th year in a row, Open Doors estimate that North Korea is the most dangerous place on earth to be a Christian. Number one on the Open Doors World Watch list. And something like 70,000 Christians are locked up for their faith in North Korea. That's the equivalent to a packed Old Trafford stadium. 70,000 Christians share our faith, but not our freedom. A question for us to think about today is this, how is it possible that Christians like Panina keep going, persevere in the face of such hardship and suffering, hit after hit, blow after blow? And how is it possible for Paul to endure such hardship and suffering, the worst that life could throw at him and make any sense of it and still look forward and long for Jesus? And it might be that's something you've been thinking about in this season where you feel weary, where you feel depleted and jaded. So how do you keep going? How do you keep hoping in the face of challenging times? I'd love to share with you today three reasons for hope. So thank you, Gold Hill, for letting me be part of your church service and for sharing in this month of prayer as we really get started into 2021. We really do have reasons for hope. Suffering is a theme in 2 Corinthians, but let's be honest, it's a very common theme across the whole of the New Testament. For a moment, let's think about it. The New Testament was written by persecuted Christians, writing to fellow persecuted Christians. 
This was an isolated, scattered group of believers facing the hardest of times. Here's the first reason for hope. It might not sound too hopeful, so hear me out. Keep with it. The first reason for hope is this. We get knocked down, but not knocked out. We get knocked down, but not knocked out. Let's look at the passage that we've read together for a moment. Look at verses eight and nine. Those words, they conjure up a picture for me of a boxing ring. Punch after punch is being thrown at Paul. He's taking an absolute beating. He's on the ropes. He, you know, he might be flawed. Crucially, though, he is not knocked out. He might be knocked down, but he isn't knocked out. Life on earth is hard, isn't it? This side of eternity, life on earth is hard. You cannot sugarcoat it. Jesus didn't. Uh, a scripture that I love that from Jesus is John 16, 33. In this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Paul didn't sugarcoat it either. Paul spent a lifetime, decades of suffering daily for Christ. It taken its toll on him emotionally, physically, mentally. It must have been overwhelming at times. But he doesn't glaze over, airbrush or downplay his suffering. And, and neither yours, neither yours. The language he uses makes that really plain. Look at the words, they're feeling words. His experience has cut deep. You get a sense of the depth of anguish. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Words and emotions that we can all probably resonate with right now to varying degrees. The Apostle Paul and contemporary persecuted Christians like Panina and others are so well placed to mentor us, to help us navigate following Jesus through hard, difficult times. Their testimony, their lessons can help us to not lose heart, to grow and increase our capacity to be resilient, to not give up, to keep going, to stay the course, to persevere. You know, it's why we need to connect with the stories of courageous faith from persecuted Christians around the world. They're not just statistics, they're not strangers either, they're family. These are family stories and these are stories to help encourage courage in us. And at the end of the talk today, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to stay connected with, with the persecuted church through Open Doors. I'd really encourage you to do that. There must have been times when Paul felt like he couldn't go on. And maybe you feel the same. You are fed up of COVID, lockdown three, circumstances perhaps where you're in the heat of the fire, the storm is raging. You're at the end of the, your rope and you're asking, God, where are you? How long, God? Why me, God? The message from Paul, from Panina, and the testimony of other persecuted Christians is this. Hold on. Hold on. Look at the repetition of the but nots in verses eight and nine, but not crushed, but not despairing, but not abandoned, but not destroyed. Hold on to the but nots right now. If you look earlier in verse six, Paul says the light of Jesus lives in us, dwells, makes his home in our hearts, our very being, this body, this, this fragile jar of clay. Jesus is present in our fragility, our brokenness, our ordinariness. Never forget that. In this life, we're going to be flawed time and time again, but we're not knocked out. We're not knocked out. We're going to be pushed to our limits, but somehow because of the truth, the mystery that Jesus is God with us, in us and around us, there is supernatural ability, capacity to keep going, to endure. As Christians, we never suffer alone. Jesus really is God with us, Emmanuel. In many countries on the Open Doors World Watch list, top 50, Christians have to meet in secret. They meet in houses or apartments. They gather on remote mountainsides, in jungles, thick forests. They disguise their meetings as so services might look like a picnic or a, or a simple meal. And baptisms look like swimming parties. Crucially, wherever they meet, Jesus is there with them, present. We are never, ever alone. For secret Christians in Eritrea, number six on the Open Doors World Watch list, there is no letter. Pastor Al is a church leader 
from Eritrea, part of the underground network there. And he says, Christians continue to receive training and pray together. It's very difficult. We're watched all the time. Believers cannot move around freely. This makes outreach really difficult. But as hard as it is, we have to continue. We have to continue. He also goes on to say, no one, not even the government, can block the gospel. I love that. No one, not even the government, can block the gospel. Knocked down, but not knocked out. The second reason for hope today is this, is that resurrection power is on display. Resurrection power is on display. In the here and now, the resurrection power of Jesus is at work in us. If you're a Christian, that is an incredible thing. Why was Paul able to be so resilient? Well, it was Jesus, wasn't it? I mean, that's the classic Sunday school answer to any question, right? But for Paul, it really is all about Jesus. For Paul, the resurrection of Jesus was like a megaphone cranked up high, broadcasting to the world that that God is bigger than death, bigger than suffering. And incredibly, that gets lived out, shared in our lives and our response to hard times. The empty grave dwarfs all the pain and hardships we'll ever face. The empty grave dwarfs the pain and hardships we will ever face. With a promise that one day every wrong will be made right. Jesus will make all things new. That is resurrection power at work. Let's see for a moment what the text highlights. Look at verse 10 and 11. Paul had the tightest of attachments with Jesus in the here and now, a sense of being one with him, sharing in Christ's suffering. You know, he repeats that theme, doesn't he, elsewhere? Think of Philippians. If 2020 and 2021 has taught us anything or is teaching us anything, it's this, hold everything lightly but Jesus. Hold everything lightly but Jesus. Have, have the closest of attachment with Jesus. Paul believed and lived in light of the unstoppable power of Jesus, even if outwardly it didn't make sense or look like it. For Paul, he saw his suffering as a way for others to see Jesus. For Paul, suffering, persecution is completely missional. Hard times, hard seasons were missional opportunities. The pains and the chains were actually gains for the gospel. The pains and the chains were gains for the gospel. And this is often how God works and still does. We see that around the world in many places today. This is the story of the early church and the story from around the world today that often pain and suffering is used as the motor for the gospel. The motor for the gospel. This is something that Mushtaba experienced. He's from Iran and Iran is number eight on the Open Doors World Watch list. Many of us have experienced what it's like to be confined over the last year. We're now in lockdown three and restriction and isolation to varying degrees continues, doesn't it? But imagine being locked up for your faith, put in solitary confinement. Lockdown is way more severe and long lasting for many Christians around the world. Mushtaba experienced this. He was arrested for leading a secret house church and was imprisoned in Iran's notorious Evan prison for three years. In the darkness of his prison cell, God was present and at work, although at first Mushtaba didn't clock this. He said this, I had this feeling that if I'm in prison now, it's about my sin, it's about my faults, what I'd done wrong, and that God is punishing me. But one day God spoke to me and I felt it strongly. I felt him say, Mushtaba, stop being selfish. If you're in prison now, it's not about you. It's about me. Look around yourself. And I looked around myself and I saw people, poor people, many people that had done bad crimes, many bad experiences in their lives. I saw the doors, the huge gates, the prison and the big locks on the doors and how secure it is. No one can enter the prison and start to evangelise. But it was an inner voice that said, look, I took you through these doors and these gates here to evangelise people, to talk to people about Jesus. Mushtaba saw the incredible opportunity God had placed before him for resurrection power to be on display, for resurrection power to be fully at work. He began talking to other prisoners about his faith in Jesus and in the end 
some of them accepted Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Mishtaba goes on to say, I never prayed for God to release me from prison. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in. I can work in God's kingdom wherever God places me. It doesn't matter if it's in prison or out of prison, because persecution would take the gospel to the places where nothing else can do it. I love that. Per persecution would take the gospel to the places where nothing else can do it. This, friends, is resurrection power on display. Let's look at verse 16 of the text for a moment. Here Paul says, the resurrection power of Jesus is at work daily, shaping us, maturing, maturing us. This is a continuous work. We're being renewed day by day. Notice the present tense there. This is where you place your hope. The inner you is more important than the outer you. Spiritual growth and character in God's view is more important than our short-term happiness and comfort. Of course, this doesn't quite fit with our 21st century culture and mindset, does it? And we live in this tension as Western Christians. The way of Jesus tells us that hardship, suffering pushes us to persevere. And perseverance, endurance pushes us the depth. That's why Paul wrote those famous words in Romans 5, 4. Rejoice in suffering. Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. The third reason for hope, and I've saved the best to last, it's this. The future outweighs the present. The future outweighs the present. Imagine I had some scales with me, like the ones Lady Justice holds. This side we place all that we're going through presently, the hardships, the trials, the suffering. And this side is the future if you know and love the Lord Jesus, if you're a Christian. And this is essentially what Paul does. Later on in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he lists, he names his suffering. You know, read it. He, he says, it. I've been in prison frequently, flogged, beaten with lashes and, and rods, stoned, shipwrecked, in constant danger on the run, hounded out of cities, hated, despised, gone without sleep and food, left cold and naked. Paul had the scars, the wounds on his body, a lifetime, decades of suffering for Christ. What would you add to the scales today, right now? Would you, COVID-19, cancer, broken relationships, depression, whatever it is, all that takes you out, all that floors you, that puts you on your ropes, on the ropes, all that knocks us down is here. But friends, the scales tip in favour to the future because the best is yet to come. Life on earth is horrible at times. Some days it can feel like you're dying. You just don't know how you're going to go on. And you know what? That's how Paul felt. I really believe that. But the future, eternal glory is always in view for Paul. He's looking forward, longing. See verse 16 and 17 writes there, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. And by this stage, Paul is aging, suffering had taken its toll on his body, physically, mentally, emotionally. And yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. An eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It's like reading this and you're like, Paul, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? He literally is saying that these light and momentary troubles, they're like mere fluff, like a trifle compared to eternity. The decades of suffering for Jesus are light, momentary fluff compared to all that is to come in eternity. A friend of mine died of cancer last year. She was only 25. And when she was given the news that her diagnosis was going to end in death, her dad said to her, but Kerry, this life is but a blip on the road to eternity. This life is but a blip on the road to eternity. And that is so true. We're made for more. We're made for an eternity with Jesus. Sop lives in a village tucked between jagged mountains and paddy fields in the northernmost part of Laos, very close to the Chinese border. Growing up, Sop knew nothing about Jesus. He grew up as a Buddhist. Then a few years ago, he stumbled across an old man listening to a radio and it turned out to be a Thai Christian radio broadcast. 
From then on, every night after his evening meal, Sop would go and listen to the radio with the old man, finally giving his life to Jesus. When the village chief discovered Sop's new faith, he issued an ultimatum. If you don't stop worshipping your God, go to jail or leave the village. Sop refused. Sop's pigs were poisoned, his rice farm was set on fire and his children were isolated and discriminated against in school. And finally, the family were forced to leave the village, everything they had known. With all Sop went through for following Jesus, he refused to stop sharing the gospel. He began running worship gatherings in his own home. He also received training from Open Doors, where he met other believers who'd been persecuted. And he also was trained to teach others to read and write. This enabled Sop to reach out to his old community. In fact, some of the very people that had persecuted him. Absolutely incredible. And Sop said these words, I'm reminded that if people try to kill me for my faith, the Bible says not to be afraid. They can kill my body, but not my soul. If they want to kill me, I have no problem with it, for I know where I'm going after. I know where I'm going after. The future outweighs the present. Life for the Christian is not so much about the here and now, although we get so caught up with it, don't we? We get so caught up with the present. Imagine the best day you've ever had and multiply it a million times over. It is likely to have been before 2020, let's be honest. And it won't come close to what eternity with Jesus is going to be like. It's like the best day ever on repeat, repeat. It's the happily ever after you were made for. It's the happily ever after we've all been longing for. Paul writes, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Verse 18 there has this sense of a measured gaze, focus, looking ahead, as if looking through a telescope, looking, longing for the future. The future really does outweigh the present. The scales are tipped towards the future, so fix your gaze on Jesus and look forward. Hold on. We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Throughout 2021, I know I need to hold on to this truth. I need to hold on to these reasons for hope. And it's likely you do too. And I know that the 340 million brothers and sisters we have around the world, like Sop and Panina and others, living with high and extreme levels of persecution, they desperately do too. If you have a phone to hand, I'd love you to stick it onto camera mode and point it to the QR code that you can see on screen. It will take you to a web page on the Open Doors website where you can post a prayer in response to what you've heard today. I'd love you to take that opportunity. Maybe you've been inspired by one of the stories. Maybe there's a country, a place that has really struck you. I'd love you to post a prayer for that. Later this year, we'd love to be able to tell persecuted Christians around the world how their brothers and sisters throughout the UK and Ireland have stood with them in prayer. And so that's one of the things we'll be able to do. So post a prayer. Let's pray together now. Father God, we just thank you that we are made for more. I thank you that you set eternity in our hearts. And I thank you that as Christians, we look forward, we long for the future. We know that life with you is just going to be amazing. Uh, but in the here and now, we want to pray for our world. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters living in some of the most dangerous places on earth. We want to lift them um, to you. So we name some of those places. We lift some individuals who we've heard about today to you. And we thank you for their courage. We thank you for their bravery. We thank you for their resilience, their perseverance to keep going. And as we connect with these stories of courageous faith, would you build courage in us? Would you build resilience in us to keep going, to keep looking to you, Lord, for strength day in and day out? Thank you that we do have reason to trust and hope in you. Amen. Thank you for praying. 
it's really an encouragement to be able to tell our brothers and sisters around the world that they're not alone and they're not forgotten. Our vision at Open Doors is that no persecuted Christian should be forgotten, that no persecuted Christian should suffer alone. They're not strangers, they're not just statistics, they're family, brothers and sisters, and we remember them. A second thing that you can do is to stay connected, stay connected to your family around the world through Open Doors. You can subscribe for emails and updates and ways to get involved to remember your persecuted family around the world. So there's just a little subscribe box there with you put your name in and your email and we'll, we'll love to be able to keep you updated with ways in which you can speak up, you can pray and really get involved in, in standing alongside your family around the world who are most persecuted. At the bottom of the page, you'll see that you can also order a free copy of the World Watch List Top 50 booklet. Now, that's a great way to fuel your prayers, to help you pray intelligently and passionately for your brothers and sisters around the world and really learn some stuff as well and encounter some more stories of courageous faith. So just fill out that box and we'll send you that in the post. Finally, maybe this is something you can go away and think about, but could you give to support the work of Open Doors? Our vision is to reach the one in eight, the most persecuted Christians like Panina, like Sop, to let them know that they're not alone or forgotten, to bring them the hope and resources that they need. And this is something that you could do. Maybe you could match a subscription in your life, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, whatever it is that you might do as an individual or as a family. So if you think you can give, click on that link there and start supporting Open Doors today. Thank you, Gold Hill, for your prayers and support. We really appreciate you at Open Doors and may God bless you in 2021. We really do have reason to hope.